The sun had shifted its position, and time was running out for the design competition submission. Brenda was still missing. Cameron was sure Susie had something to do with it. Cameron called for Melanie. Do you need me, Mr. Kent? What's this woman's name? It's Susie Mayer. Tell me everything you know about her family background. As far as I know, her father is the president of Mayer Media. Luca, get the ball rolling on buying and destroying Mayer Media. I want to see a solid acquisition plan before six o'clock this evening. Yes, Mr. Kent. <gasps> you can't do that! Aren't you afraid of being criticized for letting your private life affect your business decisions? I'm not the least bit afraid of that. I'll give you one last chance. If you still don't know anything about where Brenda is, your family won't be able to do business in Los Angeles. Susie knew that he wasn't bluffing. Okay, I'll tell you. Is anyone out there? Can anyone hear me? Brenda's voice echoed in the quiet forest, but no one came. There was nobody nearby. Help! Please help me! Brenda sat back on the ground, feeling helpless. She only had a pencil, some erasers, and a sketch pad. After a few minutes of contemplation, she relaxed and inspiration struck her. She picked up her pencil and began to draw. Cameron had found Brenda. He stood under a nearby tree watching Brenda with a soft gaze. Luca wanted to call out to her, but Cameron stopped her. Don't disturb her. After 45 minutes of drawing, Brenda finally finished her last stroke and took a deep breath. She put down her pencil. That's exactly the look I was thinking of. When Brenda stood up and checked her watch, she found that it was already 4.40 p.m. and she was nearly out of time. I would need to run there to make the deadline and I can't even walk. Brenda. Cameron! Cameron jumped down into the hole and Brenda hugged him tightly. She buried her face in his chest. I'm so happy to see you. Were you looking for me? I'm sorry I'm late. No, you're not late. You're just in time. Back at the base camp, Melanie glanced at her watch. It's already 4.57. Everyone has submitted their work and gotten on the bus except for Brenda. And Susie. Susie had been severely affected by her ordeal and was in a state of shock, unable to continue drawing. It's a shame. I was optimistic about her. But why did Mr. Kent do all this for Brenda? I don't know. Melanie checked her watch again. It was 4.49 with 30 seconds to go. A small smile formed on her lips. It's 5 o'clock, so today's round is... Wait! Brenda slammed her drawing down in front of her. She looked at her watch and then back up at Melanie. It's 4.59 and 55 seconds. The round isn't over yet. I'll allow it, but I don't expect it will prove that you're any good at design. Five seconds late and you would have been disqualified. As soon as Brenda got home, Cameron lifted her up and carried her into the bedroom. Once they were inside, he gave her a deep kiss. You need to take a bath after what you've been through today. Brenda immediately went into the bathroom. Cameron raised his eyebrows and decided not to remind her that she hadn't taken a change of clothes with her. Cameron, I forgot to bring fresh clothes in here with me. Could you throw some in for me, please? In other words, you're not wearing anything right now. That's right. Could you be a dear and go to the closet and get something for me? I don't mind whatever you get. Cameron pushed open the bathroom door and went in. Brenda turned pale and she tried her best to cover herself with a small towel. What did you come in for? I also got quite dirty when I was wandering around that forest. Let's take a bath together. I've already taken a bath. Cameron took her hand and led her over to the bathtub. Don't you want to? I just want to take a bath with you. What are you thinking? Brenda's hesitation melted away. She gave in and guided by his strong hands, she helped him take off his clothes. The next day, Brenda arrived at work to find Susie absent. What a relief, she thought. Ashley came into her office at lunch. Do you know how long Susie will be gone? You mean you don't know? She's been fired. Fired? I had no idea. I'm not saying that I'm disappointed, though. Do you know why? Yes, I do. Don't tell anyone. But she was caught snooping into confidential information about the competition. She was working with someone from admin, and they've been fired, too. Wow. No wonder she was doing so well. I can't say I'm shocked that she was cheating, though. 
Susie returned to the office later at night, hoping to grab a few things from her desk before anyone saw her. She threw her things in a box, and as she walked out the main entrance, she saw Laura and Wayne Keaton deep in conversation. She realized she was wrong about Brenda. It was Laura who was having an affair with Wayne Keaton. Laura and Wayne turn around and are shocked to see Susie. Oh, hello. Have you just finished collecting your things? Yes, I wouldn't want anyone getting their hands on something that doesn't belong to them. It looks like you know a bit about that. Oh, will you tell anyone? Your pathetic little affair is of no interest to me. But maybe if you told Melanie that Brenda is having an affair with her husband, then I'd keep my mouth shut. Susie turned around to leave. Just then, Melanie came walking out through the doors. She stifled a yawn. Oh, hello. Was that Susie I just saw? Yeah, she came back to pick up her things. We just said goodbye. Melanie felt bad for Susie. She suspected that Cameron had driven Susie out of the company at Brenda's behest. Laura stood and watched Melanie with guilty eyes. By the way, Melanie, do you have a moment? What's the matter? I'm not sure. I've just witnessed something I think you need to know about. Oh, and what might that be? I saw a man and a woman together. When I came closer, I saw that the woman was Brenda, and the man, it was Wayne. They looked intimate. They jumped apart when they noticed me and begged me not to tell anyone I saw them together. I'm sorry, but I think you deserve to know. Melanie froze, and her face lost all its color. A stunning woman dressed in black was sitting in the back seat of a luxurious car. She looked out the window with a look of contempt on her face. Next to her was her assistant who noticed her boss seemed distressed. What's... what's on your mind, ma'am? I hear they're in love. I don't believe that, ma'am. Cameron Kent would never choose anyone over you. I need you to find out everything you can about Brenda Strong. I'm sure she's got enemies. By the way, I found Mr. Kent's personal number. It wasn't easy at all. Good work. Oh, Mr. Kent, how did you think I'd let you go so easily? Brennan Riley was a smart woman. She had a way of getting what she wanted. In the case of Cameron, she knew how to get into his head. After all, they had been together for a long time. But what did this mean for Brenda? Did Brennan actually have a hold over Cameron? Will Brenda be able to stop Brennan? Hi, Brenda here. Hope you are loving Love Bargain. Keep following us as we release a new episode of Season 1 daily on YouTube. You can jump the queue and unlock all seasons of the audio series by installing the Pocket FM app now. Just click on the link in the description. To watch the next episode of Season 1, tap here and to watch the full Season 1, click on the playlist.